Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this week's episode, we're taking a tour of a one-of-a-kind box truck overlander. Rory decided to build out his home on wheels to save money on rent and enjoy being more mobile. And this 90 square foot home packs a lot of punch. Not only has it helped Rory achieve financial freedom, it also features a clever multi-level design and a roof that opens up to the stars. But before we jump right into the tour, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. My name is Rory, and this is my adventure truck, the Leopard Overland. About eight years ago, I decided I wanted to move into a box truck just to cut down on rent and be a little more mobile. I came across uh, Expedition vehicles, which are pretty much big 4x4 trucks and those are kind of what I base this design off of. The reason I want to go that route is because they're super sturdy, they can live in multiple environments, and they're spacious. Once I decided I wanted a flatbed, I was going to maybe put just a, a refrigerated box on it, but nothing really came up, so I just decided to build the whole thing. I was up for the challenge. I've been building houses with my dad on and off since high school, so I did have construction experience. Once I bought the truck that I originally had, built this camper, and took about two years to actually move in. And that truck did really well for the three, four years that I had it. But when I decided to upgrade to a bigger truck, the Azuzu NPR, I spent $15,000 on the truck. The camper itself, I've probably spent about $30,000 on. Like all set and done, the camper, not including my hours, the truck and the repairs over the last year, I'm probably about $60,000 all in. For work, I am a ski instructor in Aspen, Colorado. That's like a part-time job. I work like four and a half months a year. When I want to move, I just pick up and go. I don't have to figure out leases, deal with first and last month's rent. And then when, say, the ski season is over, I just pick up and head to the next location. Welcome to my adventure truck. This is a Azuzu 2009 NPR HD. It's about 14 by seven and a half and eight feet wide. A few years ago, I added on this ladder, which has been super helpful. Hop up onto the deck right here, and then from the deck, you can hop onto the roof. Now, up here, you got a lot of space, actually. So this is a good hangout zone. It's almost like a roof deck. I've got 400 watts of solar. The solar panels are at an angle, and so if I take out a couple little bolts, the whole panels can flip up to about like uh, 80 degrees or so. And the nice thing about that is living in Colorado when it snows every day, but then gets sunny, is the snow will melt off or slide off. So that's a pretty big bonus. So I've got the flatbed in the box, and I really wanted to be able to lift up the box from the truck. And so these extensions right here, you bolt on camper jacks, they're about 5,000 pounds each with some custom extensions. And then you unbolt the truck from the box and then you jack this up and then you can basically drive the truck away. And the truck is in a flatbed. And then this camper can be just posted up wherever. So then right over here, I've got a ladder that just kind of bolts on. It's pretty straightforward and really easy. Um, this is my water intake. I have a 42 gallon freshwater tank and then a 42 gallon gray water. 42 gallons, when I fill it up, last quite a long time, multiple weeks. And these are just two boxes that I have fuel, some tools up top. Those are two propane tanks. So I have two propane heaters and a propane water heater as well. I live in Colorado in the winter and when it's zero degrees out, I use probably one of those a week. And then I carry two more of these in here as well. So when I fill up, I fill up four or five and then go with that. See right here, this is just a little hatch for my garage space. So right here underneath my bed is my storage area. I always carry a generator as a backup power source. 
and tools and my battery system is under here and I have 300 amp hours of lithium that's connected to a 2000 watt inverter charger along with a control charger from 400 watts of solar on the roof and then a DC-DC charger from my alternator. So here is my Azuzu cab. And if uh, you've ever been in one of these, uh, right away you notice it's super wide. There's just so much room here and so you feel pretty far up when you're driving and it definitely feel like you're driving a big truck. So another neat thing about these cab over trucks is the engine is underneath. So this whole cab tilts over. So to flip the cab up, there's just a bunch of little levers and knobs. And you gotta do them in the right order. <laughs> Lift with your legs and the whole thing pops up. So you got the whole transmission and engine all right there, pretty accessible. All right, well, let's take a look inside. This is the inside of my adventure truck. It's about 90 square feet. As you go through the different spaces, you'll notice there's lots of levels. So I wanted to incorporate different levels of height. And so it doesn't feel as small as it is. So right over here is my bedroom. It's a queen size bed. And because this is a big box truck, there's plenty of space. So it's actually a lot longer than a queen. This hatch right here, this is foam that I fiberglassed. And they're two big chunks. And they're kind of held in by these little nails that come sliding out. This goes next to the office, kind of slides up here. A little pin right there. This comes out and drops down. So when I was designing this box, I knew I wanted to have a big skylight over my bed. When we did the steel frame, we had it open and had this box, this kind of like open area. And that way, when I decided to actually build this part of it, I had a bunch of structural strength. This piece right here came a couple years later. It's a carbon fiber, fiberglass, and polycarbonate. And it opens up. to kind of give an outdoor feel to my bed area. Another neat part of this is you can get onto the roof from this bed. The interior of the house, I decided to go with kind of a light wood and dark look along with this aluminum trim. All in all, this area is like a pretty clean, I wanted to keep it kind of a more modern look, I guess. So underneath the bed, I put in these slider drawers and they go out about four and a half feet. So here is my fridge. It's um, an upgrade from a couple years ago and it's 120 volt and it does pretty well unless it's like 80 degrees in here. Then it uses a lot of power. I can go to the grocery store and the food will start going bad before I finish it if I actually fold this fridge all the way up. So many weeks I can be off grid. Underneath my bed, I have my closet area, my garage closet area. Tons of storage for a bike, as long as the wheels are off. So my dining area, a couple things about it that stood out when I was first designing this is it's up pretty high. And so you have to really step up about 16 inches. And so I'm sitting and my head is at pretty much eye level for everyone else standing. I think that was pretty important. That way when people are sitting here and people are standing in the kitchen area, we're all kind of in the same level. Because it's up 16 inches, I have a bunch of storage. So there's storage under here, storage here, and as well back this area. The table itself pivots up. This right here, you unscrew it. It drops down and that just makes it easier access for the storage. In this corner over here is my portable air conditioner. It's a 120 volt hooked up to my battery system and it's an EcoFlow Wave. The space is pretty insulated, so something like a small air conditioner like this does a pretty good job. If you look over here, there is my office space. Uh, when I was designing this from the start, I knew I wanted a workspace that was separate than the table. And so I built an office that's kind of lofted. And up here, it's another one of the examples of like the multiple levels that I've got going on. So your feet kind of drop down here. Drop this over here, and then I got my laptop 
and a 27 inch monitor. And that way you can have your work area separate than your living area. When I was designing this, I wanted to make sure there's enough like elbow space right here and enough room for your mouse not to feel like scattered. This pivots right here as well. So this can actually come out to over here. Right over here, I've got um, Klipsch speakers and they're um, powered. So I have one over here and one over on that side and they have a Bluetooth connection to a 10 inch subwoofer. So right over here underneath my office is like a pantry area and it goes back pretty far. My air conditioner that's over here is vented in this area as well. Um, and then I have two propane Propex heaters in the back. This right over here is my kitchen area. It's kind of based off of the stainless steel sink and counter space. So I got um, a cabinet over here. This just slips down. It's super quick and easy. I got dishes space right above the drying space. And so moving from the sink to drying to storage is really efficient. Right behind here, you'll notice this back, this is like a vinyl flooring. So it's actually the same material that I use for the floor to match. Here I've got a spider plant. This one's doing really well. It's survived many years actually, a winter and summer. So right over here are my curtains. A friend and I went to Joanne Fabrics and did an upgrade. And they are kind of like a fun vibe to this area. Drinking water, so this is a, has a filter system from my 42 gallon fresh water tank. So this is drinking water, just tap water. Under here I have my 42 gallon fresh water. The corner over here is a on-demand uh, propane water heater. Over this area I've got a two burner propane stove. And then underneath it I have an induction single top. If it's sunny out, I can use my induction if I have plenty of power. And if I'm worried about my power system being a little drained, I can use my propane. Having the ability to do three is pretty unique for a small space like this. Over here is my bathroom. I wanted to have a shower space that was somewhat different or separated from my compost and toilet. And so I built a little platform right here to separate the toilet from the shower area. You can kind of see these pieces right here that slide out. They slide out, get set over here, and you can use the composting toilet. Or normally it's stored up like this and you have a shower space that is, um, doesn't have a toilet right in it. With the shower space, I have one of my heaters come out right here. And so this area, when I decide to take a shower, I can turn on the heater, um, let it get a warm, little warmer. And so it turns into almost like a sauna space. The system I use for taking the shower is up in this area and it's kind of like a pump. So I fill it up with hot water from my on-demand propane heater in my kitchen, pop it over here and use that. And it uses about a gallon of water per shower. So it's super minimal because you're only using the water when you're, you're pressing the, the nozzle. Living in this truck for almost five years, I feel like I've been able to save more money. It's definitely given me financial freedom. It's given me a lot of freedom to jump around a lot and travel. Within the next couple years, I'm hoping to do a Leopard Overland round two. Uh, it'll be a different chassis. It's gonna be a crew cab. And then this back will be a little more adventure worthy. So it'll be lighter, not as top heavy, a little more like four by four ready. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.